हेलो वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू एवरी वन अजीत सर एम आई ऑडिबुल ओके सो वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स प्रेजेंट इयर फॉर द डेमो क्लास ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट ऑर्थोडोंटिक्स आई माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर ध्रुमिल मानिक वेलकम यू ऑल टू द प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ डेंटिस्ट्री टू द पॉइंट एंड वी ऑल आर यर फॉर द डेमो क्लास ऑफ ऑर्थोडोंटिक्स फॉर द बैच ऑफ मास्टर क्लास वन पॉइंट ओ and i am really glad to announce that we have dr ajit gv who is going to deal with the subject of orthodontics and dentofacial orthopedics for the final year bda student for the coming two and a half months who are interested in joining this course right so and i would also like to share that dr ajit sir is also a very senior faculty to me uh, dealing with this line of teaching uh, career from a very long time of 2 to 3 years or more than that also so i would hand over the platform to dr ajit sir so that he can start with his demo lecture and then we can have a doubt session also with him if you guys have any queries you can surely ask him you are free to ask any queries you do not feel that he is a staff or faculty he has a very friendly nature over here and he is going to solve all your queries and apart from that if you guys have any queries regarding the classes of master class 1.0 you can also ping that in the chat box or you can just turn on your mic and ask the queries when the once the uh, demo class is over right so i'll just uh, share the presentation ajit sir and then you can take over the platform welcome to dentistry to sure. the point thank you thank you so much uh, very good evening to all my dear students as dr kumila has explained about me so i am dr ajit jv assistant professor from department of orthodontics from salem vinayaka mission sankracharya dental college so i have finished my pg last year so now i have one and a half years of experience in teaching my dear students so i take through this platform so i would like to uh, welcome you all to dentistry to the point 1.0 the master class 1.0 it is a very great initiative so think like a wise man but communicate in the language of people so to reach students i feel this in this generation this way of platform is the right way to reach you people so i would like to join you whole heartedly for this and i welcome all of you to my demo lecture so what are we are going to see Okay, so this is how our classes are going to be from now on. So first thing, my students have told me, sir, if you give clues, it will be easy for us to remember and write in the exam. I think it will be same for all of you. So there will be clues, easy clues to remember all the subjects, all the chapters in orthodontics. And second, there will be pictorial rep representations that is with handmade notes. so i will always prefer handmade notes more than the ppt version so third is important questions to be answered in each chapter whenever i deal with some chapters i will always tell my students about the important questions that are repeated in the university exams then at the end of each uh, chapter or each lecture you will have take home messages that is the main highlight points of all all the chapter whole chapter you will have highlight points so take home messages and the last will be the interactive question and answer session so this is how our classes are going to be for this whole year so next coming to this most important point that i used to convey to my dear students so tell me i will forget them show me i will remember but involve me only then i will understand so i want all of you to get involved to the lecture so i need a response so so that i could confirm that you all are involved in the lecture so can i have a message or something that you all are listening to me and you are ready to listen to the class in the chat You can also raise your hand if you are listening. Students, yes, Samita, 
அமிர்தா மாலிக் எஸ் எஸ் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் யூ ஆர் ஆக்டிவ் நாட் ஸ்லீப்பிங் ஃபைன் 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 இட்ஸ் எ ஹியூஜ் ரெஸ்பான்ஸ் மோர் தென் சிக்ஸ்டி பர்சன்ட் ஸோ கம்மிங் டு த பாயிண்ட் வாட் இஸ் ஆர்த்தராண்டிங் சி த பிக்சர் கேர் the girl on the left both of them are beautiful in their own way so girl on the left according to the society she is called as orthodox girl she is less she is an example for orthodox girl the girl on the right she is wearing this skirt she is called unorthodox so orthodox is something that is straight straight according to the rules and regulations so i am not mean there so according to the society's view the girl on the left is called orthodox so what is orthodontics on to the next slide you know orthodontics is nothing but it is derived from a greek word called orthos which means straight so anything that is straight is called orthos orthodox is straight orthognathia is straight jaw your upper jaw and lower jaw if it is straight it is called orthognathia and orthos means straight odontos means teeth in a simple word orthodontics is nothing but straightening of teeth so if you all would have heard about definition of orthodontics can any of you tell the definition of orthodontics clearly next slide yeah define orthodontics there is a definition given by B S S O that is British Society of Study of Orthodontics in the year 1922 so no problem now i will tell you how to remember this definition we we'll start with the basics of orthodontics today so i don't want to bore you with the new topic in this demo lecture so i'll give you what are all my students felt difficult in remembering so i'll give you the solution for this so what is orthodontics so first thing you should remember split the definition into three parts first is study of growth and development simple so orthodontic is a study there is no doubt about it so orthodontics includes study of growth and development of jaws and the face so jaws and the face particularly and the body whole body generally why you want to study about the growth of the body and all because it is influencing the position of the teeth that is why you are reading about the the growth and development of jaws and the face particularly it is influencing the position of the teeth and second thing the growth of the general body which is also influencing the position of the teeth so first part to remember is growth and development so split the second part it is growth is not uniform for me and you so you may have excess growth at my age i may have reduced growth so it is different so what is the reason for the difference in growth it is because there is some influences in the development so second point to remember is influences on the development so second point to remember is influences on the development so there is internal and external influences on the development study of action and reaction of external and internal influences on the development so first study of growth and development second thing is influences on the development third is it is not only involving with the so it is also involving with your jaw so the prevention and correction of arrested and perverted development you can also prevent and correct the arrested development by giving some appliances into your mouth that can alter your direction of growth so if the growth is arrested or uh, perverted you can redirect the growth by giving appliances so three parts in the definition first part is study of growth and development of the jaws and the face particularly so second part is action and reaction of external and internal influences on the development and the third part is prevention and correction of altered development so now coming to the definition of orthodontics orthodontics includes study of growth and development of the jaws and the face particularly on the body generally as influencing the position of the teeth why you are studying the growth as it is influencing the position of the teeth second thing is action and reaction of influences on the development third thing is prevention and correction of 
arrested and forgotten out. So this is the definition of orthorotics. So this is the first question which will be asked in your viva or any questions. So moving on to the next. Next slide. So what is the aim and objective of your orthodontic treatment? So aim and objective, we will call it as Jackson's triad. So you all know what is Jackson triad. So Jackson triad is pertaining to the aim of your orthodontic treatment. For everything you should have an aim. So what is the aim of your orthodontic treatment? So we will see. First you should remember a clue which I gave. Feast. F-E-A-S-T. We will move on to next slide. That is feast. So we will never forget what is the aim and objective of orthodontic treatment according to Jackson. So it is called as Jackson triad. So remember the word feast. F-E-A-S and T. F-E-A-S-T. Feast. F-E. First point is functional efficiency. So functional efficiency and A-S. Second point is aesthetic. For any orthodontic treatment, any person who is coming to orthodontic treatment will be to change the aesthetic problem. So, first point is FE, functional efficiency, then AS, feast, you remember feast, FEAST. Yes, so FE, that means functional efficiency, then aesthetic, aesthetic harmony, and third point is ST, structural balance. So, functional efficiency. So, first thing, any person will come to you for aesthetic reason. So, you have to take aesthetic harmony. So, most common, it will be the most common reason for opting your orthodontic treatment. So, aesthetic harmony, then functional efficiency. So, because they come for orthodontic treatment, so first thing is function. You have to improve the function of whole system, all the orofacial system. Function has to be your aim. And second thing is aesthetic harmony. Your the because the patient will come opting for orthodontic treatment because of aesthetic reason. So second thing is aesthetic harmony. And the third thing that is the structural balance. Three things has to be in balance. One is the teeth. That is dental alveolar structure. Then the bones associated with the teeth. That is your axilla and mandible. So skeletal structure. And third thing is the muscles that is surrounding your bones. So three things has to be in balance. So, structural balance pertaining to three things. One is your dental alveolar structure, that is your teeth. Second thing is your bone, that is skeletal structure. And third thing is your musculature, that includes soft tissues, all the soft tissues, that includes your musculature. So, feast is the clue which I used to give for Jackson's triad. So, functional efficiency, aesthetic harmony and structural balance. So, for structural balance, three things has to be in balance. One is the teeth, that is your dental alveolar structure. And second one, that is the Skeletal structures, that is your maxilla and mandible. And third thing is your soft tissue balance, that is your muscle and nerves, all the muscles that is surrounding your bone should be in balance. All these should be in balance. This is called as structural balance. At the end of your orthodontic correction, you should achieve all these three things. Functional efficiency, aesthetic harmony and structural balance. This is called Jackson's triad or aim and objective of the orthodontic treatment. So you should remember feast. So moving on to next what are all the services which are offered by an orthodontist? So you will confuse all these. So remember fix. So fix is nothing but preventive, interceptive, corrective and surgical. So preventive. What is preventive orthodontics? My dear friends, preventive is nothing but to preserve what is normal to that stage. You should not harm. It should not harm. So to prevent to actions taken to preserve what is normal at the particular stage is called as preventive orthodontics such as space maintainers giving oral hygiene instructions to prevent caries formation all this comes under preventive orthodontic procedure so main example is space maintainer second is interceptive interceptive orthodontics is to prevent establish to, to prevent the establishment of full fledged malocclusion so now you have seen mild malocclusion and you are predicting that predicting that it will end up in a full-fledged molecular in near future.
so you are stopping you are intercepting it during a starting stage so this is called preventing the establishment of fully established malocclusion this is all carried out during the mixed dentition period so all those things that are carried out during a mixed dentition period preferably mixed dentition period are called as interceptive orthodontic such as your growth modulation procedure you will change your growth of mandible by giving some appliance called as myo functional appliance myo is muscle function is altering the function of the muscles so myo functional appliance will alter the function of your muscles that are attached to your mandible to redirect the growth so these things myo functional appliance your headgear your face mask all those carried out during your mixed dentition period or growth modulation period comes under interceptive orthodontic so preventive we spoke about space maintainers right in interceptive you have already lost the space so you are regaining the space so space regainers so you are regaining the space so that will come under interceptive so preventive example is space maintainer interceptive example is space regainers and then third thing it is called as corrective orthodontics whatever treatment you are doing extracting upper premolar non extraction space close wear once the fully established small occlusion you have seen in your permanent dentition you are doing some treatment that is called as corrective part of orthodontics and fourth it is called as surgical orthodontics it can be urgent to a surgery can be an urgent to a normal orthodontic procedure or only surgery procedure this comes under surgical orthodontics now there are new term that coming to us called as surgery first approach so first surgery then orthodontic so picks you remember this picks these are the services offered by orthodontists preventive interceptive corrective and surgical orthodontic procedure preventive is example space maintainer interceptive example all those growth modulation procedure corrective example is your camouflage dental treatment by doing fixed appliance or removable appliance whatever used to correct the fully established small occlusion or corrective orthodontics and then there is fourth part that is called as surgical orthodontics there can be conventional surgery or there can be surgery first approach so next so moving on to preventive as i have explained preventive is the services taken to prevent what is normal at the stage so parent education about oral hygiene maintenance and regular caries control and care of your deciduous dentition management of ankylosed tooth and oral habit and habit breaking appliances if necessary and damage extraction of supernumerity space maintenance management of deep leaf lock first permanent molar management of abnormal frenal so this all so if abnormal frenal attachment has already caused your spacing it will not come under preventive so steps taken to prevent the small occlusion to establish before the small occlusion could establish comes under preventive orthodontic procedure so you remember three things mainly that is parent education caries control space maintenance and management of deeply locked first permanent molar habit breaking is important thing and second thing is space maintenance two things you should remember so preventive is nothing but habit breaking appliance and space maintenance coming to interceptive you will deal with serial extraction and i told you already space regaining and sixth point is important that is interception of skeletal mold relation that is what i told you about the myo functional appliances like pin lock like prankle and your head gear face mask all those so preventive example is space maintainers and your habit breaking appliances interceptive example is interception of skeletal mold relation that is by myo functional appliances head gear face mask all those growth modulation procedure second thing is space regaining space maintenance comes under preventive orthodontic procedure and space regaining comes under interceptive orthodontic procedure and correction of developing crossbite comes under interceptive orthodontic so i have given you introduction about orthodontics aims and aims and objective of orthodontics and what are all the services offered by our uh, orthodontics and what are preventive and what are interceptive in a gross gross idea i have given so moving on to next part that is most of our students could have find this question so different methods of gaining space so from methods of gaining space how will you gain space 
So in orthodontics, gaining space is most important procedure. So if you have to correct the small occlusion, you need space. Because there is no space in naturally, there is small occlusion. That is your crooked tooth arrangement because of lack of space in your arch. So tell me, what are all the methods of gaining space? So note down the point I am giving. So you will never forget this answer. So it is nothing but 2P, 2D, 2E and 1U. 2P, 2D, 2E and 1U. So 2P, what are all the two P's? P's, proximal stripping. Second P is proclination of anteriors. It is the two ways by which you can gain the space. But slicing of your proximal surface, that is mesial and distal surface of anterior you will slice you will remove not more than 50 percent of enamel surface from anteriors it can also be done on your posterior surface so proximal stripping so by doing stripping you can gain space so two p is proximal stripping and proclination of anteriors so remember this when you proclaim the anteriors you will gain space in the arch so when you proclaim the anteriors you will gain space proclination is nothing but changing the axial inclination so labial inclination of teeth so that is called proclination of anterior so 2d coming to 2d first d is distalization you will distalize the molar so will, you will get space between your molar and premolar so distalization and second d 2d that is derotation of posteriors your posterior teeth remember this carefully you should not write only derotation you should write derotation of posterior Derotation of posterior will give you space, but derotation of anterior will you have to lose space. So, derotation of posteriors will give you space. So, in method of gaining space, you should write derotation of posteriors. To derotate your anterior, you need space in the arch. So, don't write anteriors. So, 2P is proximal stripping and proclination of anteriors, 2D is distalization and derotation of posteriors and 2E, that is extraction. It can be first premolar extraction, second premolar extraction, or it can be of single incisor extraction. Single incisor extraction, preferably done more on your class 3 patients. So, it can be first premolar extraction, second premolar extraction, or so extraction will gain you space. Then, expansion, expansion of arch. You are widening your arch, your maxillary arch, you are widening by loosening your suture. Which suture? your palatal suture palatine suture you are loosening and then you have something called operating of molar so 2p 2d and 2e and 1u so proximal stripping proclination of anteriors distalization derotation of posterior and extraction expansion and third is operating of molar suppose your molar is like this horizontally your crown and root length it will occupy more space so if you operate it will occupy only less space. So, operating of molar, you will gain space. So, seven things to remember 2P, 2D, 2E, and 1U proximal stripping, proxy, proclination of anteriors, distalization, derotation of posteriors, extraction, expansion, and operating of molars. So, there are various methods of expansion that we will discuss further in a later classes. So, as of now, you remember methods of gaining spaces. 2P, 2D, 2E and 1U. Proximal stripping, which is also called as proximal slicing, which is also called as standardization. Then we will move on to next, that is called as theories of retention. So now I am giving you overview of the questions, which my students found it difficult. So now I am not, we are not going into the detail of all this. So now I am giving you overview of clues of what are all the questions that you usually found it difficult to write in your theory paper. So tell about the theories of retention. We all know there are 10 theories. So, first 9 theories is given by or Redil and the 10th theory is given by Moya. So, at the end of the class, you should tell all the 10 theories in order. So, moving on to theories of retention. So, next, moving on to next slide. So, theories of retention. So, MCOC big fat. Remember, MCOC big fat. MCOC big fat. What is M? Mood teeth. Read the first theory. Mood teeth. Any teeth that has moved from its original position. 
will have always have the tendency attraction towards its old position former position so teeth that have been moved remember this move first is m so moved teeth tend to return to its original position or former position that is your first theory that is why you have the problem of retention retention is nothing but simply on simple terms to hold the correct teeth in its new position that is retention relapse is if you cannot hold the correct teeth in new position it will change to it is go back to the original position that is called in simple term relapse so what are all the theories proposed for this relapse are called as theories of retention so first is m c m is moved teeth c is cause any treatment elimination of cause is important suppose there is open bite because of your tongue thrusting habit to make correct your open bite by giving elastic but if you don't correct the actual cause of malocclusion that is actual cause of malocclusion for open bite is in that case might be tongue thrusting so you have to correct the tongue thrusting so m c first is moved teeth second one is cause cause of the malocclusion should be corrected and the third is o c first o c remember o c 2 first o c is over correction any malocclusion should be over correction to be a safety factor so if there are 5 mm of cross bite so you have to if there are 5 mm of cross bite you have to do it expansion of about 7 to 8 mm so that expansion extra what we are doing is called as over correction that is for a safety factor so it might relapse so over correction is third theorem and again oc that is occlusion occlusion should be proper when you correct your mole occlusion if the occlusion is not proper if the occlusion is waving around like this there is no hold between your upper and lower teeth if there is no hold between your there is high chance that it will go back to your original position so fourth point is occlusion or proper occlusion is a potent factor in holding so m c o c o c so first is moved teeth and second one is cause third one is over correction and the fourth one is occlusion proper occlusion should be maintained and fifth one is bone b big fat b bone bone and adjacent tissue should be given some time so you have moved the teeth inside to the bone it has to be given time to readapt your bone has to be given some time in the new position to readapt that is why we call retention retention bone and adjacent tissue should be given some time to reorganize around the newly positioned teeth so that is the fifth theorem b remember the b bone and adjacent tissue should be given time and the sixth theorem is i your incisor lower incisor should be perpendicular to your base your basal bone above your basal bone it should be perpendicular so that is called i big b i so next one is g seventh theorem is growth growth treatment carried out during the growing period or less likely to relapse your treatment that carried out during the growing period or less likely to relapse third issue so we are talking about mcoc and big bone and adjacent tissue should be given time in the new position and i which i spoke about is incisor and next is g which is about growth correction carried out during the growing period or less likely to relapse so when you correct the treatment when you do the treatment during your growing period or less likely to relapse that is what i meant about the growth modulation procedure that have carried out interceptive procedure and then fat f f for fat f farther the teeth moves lesser the relapse so when you move the teeth very far from its original position it is less likely to relapse when you move the teeth far from its original position less likely to relapse f then is a fat a that is arch form any arch form cannot be permanently altered particularly in mandibular arch arch form is nothing but the shape in which your teeth are arranged like this shape in which your teeth are arranged so that cannot be altered if you alter the arch form it might collapse so any arch form cannot be altered so fat last one is t remember any treated molar occlusion has to be have permanent retaining device that is what the final theorem which was proposed by moyer so first nine theorem was proposed by redel i told you m c first is moved teeth second one is c that is cause cause of the molar occlusion should be treated so or else cause of the molar occlusion should be eliminated or else high chance it will relapse then oc two oc one is over correction second one is occlusion so theorem 4 is occlusion theorem 3 is about over correction then 
big fat bone and adjacent tissue b is bone and adjacent theorem 5 is bone bone should be given some time to reorganize to readapt around the newly formed teeth and then is i it is lower incisor your lower incisor should be upright over your basal bone it should be 90 degree or less than that it cannot be more than 90 degree then there will be high chance of collapse if it is more than 90 degree then seventh theorem that is about growth treatment carried out growth during the growing period growing period that is interceptive orthodontic procedure or less likely to relapse then f farther the teeth moves how far the teeth move from its original position then there is less chance of relapse and then moving on to a that is your arch form arch form is nothing but the arrangement of a teeth around the arch that cannot be permanently altered so if you alter the arch form more chance that you will end up in relapse of your treatment so failure of your treatment so you cannot alter your arch form and last one is treated malocclusion many treated malocclusion requires a permanent retaining device so finally moyer has told whatever you follow final solution is to have permanent lifelong retaining device so permanent retaining device is the only solution according to moyer 10th theory was proposed by moyer 9th theory was proposed by reidel so remember this mcoc2 then big fat so now so what is growth so for anything and everything you will deal with growth prenatal growth postnatal growth and theories of growth so anything and everything you need to write about growth so what is growth define growth can you define growth so remember according to various author the definition of growth you should write before starting with any question pertaining to growth that is prenatal growth postnatal growth growth modulation or growth procedure appliances whatever pertaining to growth you can start with this definition so see the x mark so x is nothing but symbol of multiplication so huxley you remember that x huxley has told it nothing but a self multiplication of a living substance is called as growth huxley x mark is huxley he has told it is nothing but a self multiplication one by one it is multiplicating so living substance if it is multiply from small structure to big one it is called as growth according to huxley so you can remember this x mark which is a symbol of multiplication so self multiplication of living substance is called growth according to huxley so next is toad toad is you can hear toad t o a d toad is nothing but a other name of a frog frog like structure so toad is frog you remember the size of stomach of your frog how will how big it will be so it will keep increasing so increase in size according to toad you remember toad frog so same way crogman is is he has proposed it as increase in size the only one thing is it will from this size to it will increase so first is increase in size change in proportion that means while birth your head will occupy more proportion compared to your lower body but it will change you will as soon as you born you are born your proportion will change your lower body will become more in size that is called change in proportion so first thing is increase in size change in proportion then you have progressive complexity your definition you will have complex structures that is called progressive complexity this definition is given by krogman so increase in size change in proportion and you have progressive complexity slowly you will have a pro complex structure progressive complexity according to krogman and then you will have definition by moss m you remember moss m m is morphological parameter which any morphological parameter measurable parameter like scale you can measure height so weight you can measure all these morphological parameter that is measurable comes under growth that is what the definition given by moss you remember m that unmeasurement so morphological parameter which is measurable that can be of height length or weight breadth everything any morphological parameter which is measurable parameter is called as growth according to moss so i have told you the picture remember the stomach of that particular toad toad it is called as frog or also called as toad so increase in size is called as growth according to toad remember the multiplication huxley according to huxley it is called as self multiplication of a living substance then coming to krogman he has defined it in three increase in size change in proportion and progressive complexity 
and remember m for m mass is defined based on the measurement of measurement parameter any morphological parameter which is measurable is called as growth according to melvin mass next Do you have any suggestions? Can tell. So that was a wonderful insight about the mnemonics. So I would surely wish that I would have got those mnemonics when I was in my final year, <laughs> because it was very difficult to remember all the theories and the concepts which you explained right now. Sir, am I audible? Yeah, 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 through me. Yeah, the mnemonics were truly wonderful, sir. I really appreciate the hard work which you are putting into that. making those mnemonics and making it easy for the students over here and so we'll yeah yeah we'll hear a student suggestion if anything yeah. is there yeah so, those students uh, you if you guys have any doubts you can ask uh, dr ajit sir is uh, there with us for few more minutes so that you can get your concepts clear you, if you have any queries regarding the master class also you can type it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask us the floor is open for discussion If you guys have totally understood what sir was explaining throughout the half an hour 45 minute session then you can just give a thumbs up so that we get to know that you guys have understood or you can just raise your hand and show a positive sign Yes we can see Shanmita Amrita the people are raising hands that means they have understood what sir was explaining Yes all of them have raised hand that is almost 72 thanks sir the lecture was amazing it's by malik mohammad khan so this is the first time i'm taking in online forum so i might have difficulties in handling online forum so i'll correct it in later stage i feel i, I was little quick fast no sir you are very elaborate you are very elaborate So, so if there is any suggestions, I'll take it positively. If there is any suggestion from students, very take it positively. So, hope it was a helpful lecture. I wish to continue. Okay, okay. We'll have this uh, meeting recorded also, sir. So we'll put it in the YouTube channel. So the students yes, who showed their interest in attending the demo class but couldn't attend due to some other other reason. they might be indulged in some of the other works or it's a saturday yes. they might be partying yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that so, there is yeah. so we'll upload it on the youtube also so that they can rewatch it again and get their things cleared yeah. sir can you suggest there is for ortho so i would suggest for basic reading you can go through balaji and uh, for your uh, diagnosis part it is given excellently well in your sridhar prem kumar sridhar prem kumar to read about diagnosis uh, about how to measure your cranial index facial index that will help be uh, that will be helpful for you in your practical exam from where to where you should measure your cranial index facial index it is from glabella to opisto cranial that is your maximum skull with maximum skull all those detailing is given well in your sridhar prem kumar and also you should refer your rakosi rakosi textbook you should just go through once about your diagnosis part so two things is actually important your ortho one is diagnosis part second thing is your removal appliances third is growth if you read if you are thorough with all these three you are a master so next we we'll, next part is about the type of tooth movement what is center of resistance what is center of rotation all these are given very well in your basic book that is your sai balaji orthodontic book itself it is given in elaborately well so you can read balaji book and for growth and your clinical diagnosis you can refer sridhar prem kumar and to get exactly what is given in pg standard you can go through your rakosi textbook diagnosis rakosi textbook so i would only suggest to all of you to go through only these three textbook for ug reading Okay, so thank you so much for your guidance regarding what books to be preferred, and I guess yeah. we'll end the meet over here.
and surely okay, we we'll see many of the students uh, meeting you in the real day live sessions of master class 1.0 in future yeah thank you thank you so much to me for this opportunity thank you okay sir thank you so much for joining thank us you. good thank take care sir okay take care students bye 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 students take care